didn't know today would be your last Or that I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb I can't feel anymore I'm praying you just walk back through that door And tell me that I was only dreaming You're not really gone as long as I believe There will be another angel Around the throne tonight Love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight It's not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Always made my troubles feel so small And you were always there to catch me when I'd fall In a world where heroes come and go Well, God just took the only one I know so I'll hold you as close as I can Longing for the day when I see your face again But until then, God must need another angel around the throne tonight your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight It's not my place to question Only God knows why I'm just jealous of the angels Around the throne tonight Singing hallelujah Chapter ends, a new one now begins. Time has come for letting go. The hardest part is when you know all of these years when we were here are ending. But I'll always remember we have had the time of our lives, and now the page is turned. Stories we will write. We have had the time of our lives, and I will not forget the faces left behind. It's hard to walk away.
But if it has to end I'm glad you have been my friend In the time of our lives Where the water meets the land There is shifting in the sand Like the tide that ebbs and flows Memories will come and go All of these years When we were here Are ending But I'll always remember We have had the time of our lives And now the pages turn The stories we will write
Good morning. We're going to begin this morning. A very sad morning indeed. A time, as the Bible says in Ecclesiastes, there's a time for everything under the sun. And today is one of those days where it's a time to mourn. And so we're here today to, to mourn with, to encourage and to even celebrate the life of Shafiq. I want to thank you for taking time to be here this morning. And as we enter this time of, of worship, this time of remembrance, this time of reflecting, I want to encourage you to be a part of the service. I want to encourage you to take part with us today as we, we spend this time and as we reflect on the life of a good man, a great man, a man that would have dedicated his life to his family, to his friends, his neighbor. Today we celebrate him today. I want to encourage you to stand with me as we open in a word of prayer. Father, we give you praise, we give you thanks, we thank you for today, O oh God. Your word declares that this is the day that you have made, O oh God. And as we come to you today, we ask, O oh God, your blessings upon today, O oh God, upon this time, O oh Father, as we are in this home, in your presence, O oh God, we pray that you would have your way. Take full control. We pray for everything that is to be done, O oh God. I pray, O oh God, for the family today, O oh God. Mighty God, I pray strength upon them, O oh God. I pray a peace upon them, O oh God. I pray grace upon them, O oh Father. I pray, O oh God, that you would be with them even at this time of grief, O oh God, of hurt and of pain, O oh God, but you are a God that heals, O oh God. You are the God that comforts, O oh Father. And we ask you today, by your spirit today, to comfort them. And God, we pray that everything would be done so that you would get the honor and the glory. I thank you for everyone that is here today. I pray your blessings upon them, O oh God. We ask these mercies in Jesus' name. And everyone says, Amen, amen and Amen. I want to invite uh, Melanie, I don't know if she's up to it, but I want to invite her to come to do the scripture reading at this time.
sorry, the today comes from John, chapter 12, and it says, 1 to 3. And it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you will be also. Thank you, Melanie. Powerful words indeed. Jesus says that, let not your heart be troubled. And sometimes I know it's hard to, to not be troubled in a time like these, but we have the assurance of God's word that we're going to be with him. And the word of God says that those that belong to him, we're going to see it of a loved one face again. We're going to see even God's face when that time comes. And that's the rejoicing hope that we have. I say it's more than just a hope, it's a fact. That we are going to see one another again. And I want to encourage you today, even as we spend a little time in, in worship, clap your hands and rejoice. Yes, it, I know you're sad. I know it's hard. But rejoice knowing that God says, let not your heart be troubled. And today we want to worship God today. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. All the angels bow before Him. Heaven and earth adore Him. What a mighty God we serve.
found peacefully swaying in his hammock, a contented smile gracing his face, an ashtray by his side, and humming one of his favorite Indian tunes, he was a serene observer of life. Despite his reserved nature, he was keenly aware of his surroundings. While his memory for names was certainly not his strong suit, he was undenied, undeniably the proud father of five. To him, however, his daughters were simply Cindy, Jamie, Mary, and Krista. Dad was a stickler for cleanliness, and surely something a lot of us picked up from him. He always made sure both inside and outside was spotless, from washing the wares to sweeping and must have that cigarette in his mouth. Dad's love extended to his grandchildren, who he adored. He often treated us with snacks, juice, and our favorite haagen ice cream. He would have us on his lap for hours in his hammer, make us watch WWE wrestling, even though we watched the same episode 10 or more times while shelling red skin nuts. Once in a while, when his grandchildren gathered, he was sure to slip us a blue boot. But, funny enough, there were days when Shalini and Shalice were desperately waiting for a taxi after lessons. He would pass them straight, sometimes on the road, even though they made eye contact, or tried flagging them down. Don't think he remembered our names either. We too were called Bat, Shalice, Millie, Jane, Mary, and the little one. Our family gatherings were often filled with laughter, as we shared countless unforgettable memories. One classic tale involved Dad's creative excuse to skip work, spraying perfume in his eyes to mimic a red eye. And who could forget the time Auntie Janelle accidentally made him a spicy cup of coffee straight out of the Anchor Masala package? She definitely received some backlash for that. We still chuckle about the time he mistakenly ate the block of cocoa butter, thinking it was cheese. And when Uncle Junior fell the mango seeds that accidentally struck him. There's also the infamous day he brought a hearse from home, from home. He sent Auntie Janelle to get something from the van, warning her not to look inside. Curiosity got the best of her, and what could she have discovered? A lady well-dressed awaiting to attend her funeral. Despite the shock, it was a stark reminder of his often repeated phrase, Don't fear the dead, fear the living. We could spend hours sharing these memories, but we'll save the rest for another time. Dad was loyal, dedicated, and passionate about his position at Guru's funeral home, where he wore his white coat with pride. Even at home, he always mentioned his boys and group. His emotions ran so deep that he even cried when Mr. Richard Guru visited him, visited him once on one occasion. After retirement, he found his way back to continue his passion for his job. Guru's was more than just a good place. It was his family away from home. Two things Dad cherished, his white coat and his white car. If you ever rode with him, you'd think he was driving from the back seat because the seat was always fully reclined. Even from his hospital bed, he made sure to call and ask someone, ask if someone had started his car. When his tenure ended at Bruce Funeral Home, he became an honorary employee at Uncle Yellow's CNG service. But truthfully, his knowledge of CNG was about as deep as a teaspoon. As long as Uncle Yellows and Kishan was in the garage, he would spend hours upon with them and their clients. As we bid farewell to our beloved shopping, Saki, Doc, and Dad, we extend our heartfelt gratitude to everyone who has supported us during this difficult time. Your words, prayers, and presence have been a source of immense comfort. A special thank you to Mr. Richard Guru and the entire team at Guru's Funeral Home for their compassionate care and unwavering support. Your, profession, your professionalism and empathy have made a significant difference. The loss of Dad has left a an irreplaceable gap in our lives. Let us cherish the memories we shared with him and may his spirit continue to live in our hearts. May he rest in eternal peace. We all miss you so much. We love you, man. So you've heard just a little bit, just a little bit of this great man. And I was just, I was just sitting there and I just mentioned the pastor. He just came to me that. 
When my mother died, this is the man that 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 <laughs> that uh, that made her up, that that dressed her up, and that kind of thing. And I mean, he was known as most people know him as Doc because of his his, his the skill that he had. And it was countless of times that he would have done this job with excellence. And so today we're here again to celebrate. And I want to, at this time, just for a few moments, open the floor for anyone that wishes to come, that you may want to just share something or say something. This time is yours, just for a few moments. Next week. What about those times you'd fall sick 
don't hope, I don't have to encourage you until you finally agree to, the, to go to the hospital. No matter how sick, somehow or the other, you always have enough strength to spray that perfume and comb the hair in the middle part. Dad, I'll miss coming home to see you sitting in the garage, greeting me after school. I'll still always look for you even though you won't be there. You may be gone now, but you'll forever live on in our hearts. Alright, so at this time we um, we have a slideshow, I think we have first for a slideshow. Those of you that, that can see, um, let's take it in at this time.
is where the chapter ends A new one now begins Time has come for letting go The hardest part is when you know All of these years When we were here Are ending But I'll always remember We have had the time of our lives And now the page is turned Stories we will rise. We have had the time of our lives, and I will not forget the faces left behind. It's hard to walk away from the best of days, but if it has to end. Shifting in the sand Like the tide that ups and flows Memories will come and go All of these years When we were here Are ending But I'll always remember We have had the time of our lives And now the pages turn The stories we time of our lives and I will not forget the faces left behind it's hard to walk away from the best of days if it has to end I'm glad you have been my friend in the time of our You have been my friend in the time of our life. At this time, I want to present the Sheikh on God's Word, the celibate, our pastor, Bishop Anselm, Sir. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Pleasant morning. To all that is within the sound of my voice, I trust that you'll be hearing me on the outside. I greet you this morning in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the soon coming King. I want, on behalf of my family, on behalf of my wife, to again extend condolences to the Lee family, and even on behalf of the local church at Tahal Trace. Truly, we count it an honor and a privilege just to be here to share in this moment of paying tribute to a man by testimony that has been a servant, a simple man. And if you listen to the testimonies that was given about this man, he was a simple man. 
chose a profession that many would not want to even be part of. But he did so even in the sense of simplicity by choice to serve and to be a blessing to many. And today that brings me to the fact of the purpose that we are here. Why are we celebrating this man? And what is this moment to us? Even as we look around us, we look at the coffin, we listen to the testimonies. It says to us, it speaks to us volumes today. And I trust that we would hear what this moment is saying to us. Many of us, if not most of us, if not all of us, would have one time or the other been a part of a funeral service. Some people go just to see what's happening. Some people go just because they are neighbors. But many a time, they fail to understand that even the moment and the box is presenting a message. And the message that the box represents, the message that the moment represents, it represents the sovereignty of Almighty God. It represents time. It represents the frailty of man. It represents the choices that we make. Because the choices that we make determines, after all is said and done, where would we spend our eternity? And I don't know how you think about funeral and funeral services, but to me, every time you come to a funeral service, it is a time when God, in his love and his mercy, is speaking forth to us and reminding us that today we are looking on, but a day will come when we will be the one that folks come to celebrate. The question is, are we preparing for that day? Are we looking forward to that day? Most of us do not think about it. Most of us even do not like the idea of thinking that death would visit us. But my friend, today I pray that at the end of this service, you would be encouraged to make a choice, to think twice and know that this coffin, that this woman speaks to you and say, be ready for you know not when. The Bible tells us in the book of Hebrews chapter 9 and verse 27. It says it is appointed unto man once to die, but after there is judgment. The question is, are you preparing to meet your judge? I want to just share with you from the word of God this morning, speaking concerning choices. And I'm looking at the book of Luke this morning. Luke chapter 16, and it speaks of two men. Many of us would know, or might have heard about this situation. Two men, one rich and one a discarded, sick, and suffering man. The Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter 16 and verse 19, I'm reading from, it says, there was a certain rich man which was coated in purple and in fine linen and fared sumptuously. In other words, this man lived a luxurious life. This man lived a full life. But the scripture says also that there was also a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate, the rich man's gate, and he was full of swords. Not the kind of person that many people would like to be acquainted with. Amen. And I'm saying that because I feel this morning Shafiq lends an excellent example of what the scripture portrays to us this morning. A simple man. A man that most people would not want to associate with. Amen. But the scripture says, at this beggar desiring to be fed, from the crumbs which fell off the rich man's table. How many a time 
we have faced. I don't know who Shafiq might have been able to communicate with, whose house, whose home he might have been invited to, to celebrate him as a man. He might have been a man like this beggar man, a discarded man, not an affluent man, not a man that uh, uh, possessed many things, uh, but the scripture says, and this is where I want us to focus today, because it is a common uh, a statement uh, that six feet of earth uh, makes us all equal. I say this morning, I debound that, I say this morning, the only thing that makes us equal is Almighty God. God does not matter uh, what you possess. God does not matter how you look. God does not matter, amen, whether you're rich or whether you're poor. What God is concerned about is the choices that you make, amen. Because the choice that you make has serious consequences. The scripture says, and it came to pass. Amen. And it came to pass that the beggar died. Who cares about the beggar? Amen. Who cares about the beggar? As far as many people are concerned, it's natural for the beggar to die. We expect the beggar to die. Why? Because he was a sick man. He was a man filled with sores. He was lying on the street. How many of us sometimes we walk the road and we see individuals, eh, are beggars, eating out of bins, doing things. How many are really concerned? How many even feel something for them? Amen. But the scripture says, listen, the scripture says, the beggar died and was carried by angels into Abraham's bosom. Sorry, ain't finished yet. The scripture says, and the rich man also died. You see, money will save you from that. Amen. Some of us believe that because we may possess some blessings, and I call it blessings from Almighty God, that we are in control, we are in charge. But the scripture rightly identifies to us, amen, that God is the one who determines our worth, our value, our length of days. Amen. You can have money. You may live old, you can also die young. Sometimes you look around, I know most of us today, we are, we are very computer savvy and ID savvy and you know a lot of things. Look around and you see some people in this world, they possess money like that, even if they have three or four lifetimes, they cannot spend what they have, amen. But the scripture identifies that in spite of who they are and what they possess and the position of authority or power that they may hold, that would come knocking out and there is no turning away debt because debt is not dictated by man's ability. Debt is not dictated by man's possession. Debt is dictated by the almighty God. And I submit to you today that this coffin and this man and this moment says to us even now that our turn would come. Our time would come. The question is, are you ready? What choices have you made? Hallelujah. The scripture says the rich man died and in hell. I know sometimes people try to wipe away that, that word hell, but there is a hell. There is a heaven. We like to think about heaven. We like to think about the goodness of God. We like to think about the favor of God. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. We sing that lustily, but I say to you, the choices that you make will determine whether you make heaven or hell. Because just as there is a heaven, there is a hell. The wisdom of the world identifies that to us. There is an up, and if you believe in up, you better believe in down. Amen. If you believe in rain, you've got to believe in sun. So if you believe in heaven, my friend, you better believe in hell. And the choices you make, even now, will determine whether or not you make heaven or hell. Hell is real. The scripture says that the rich man died. Hallelujah. Oh my God. 
and being, he opened his eyes and being tormented in hell. I know we don't like to, to, to believe it. Some people try to water it. Some people try to say, a loving God will not send you to a tormented hell. I say to you and I submit to you, friend, God don't send anybody to hell. Hell is the choice that you made. The Bible says, ah, Joshua looked at the children of Israel and he says to them, he said to them, choose you this day, choice. Whom you will serve. Because whether you like it or not, believe it or not, you're serving somebody. Either you're serving God or you're serving the devil. You're a servant of righteousness or a servant of sin. Hallelujah. And your money can't bribe God. And your poverty does not betray you from God. Hallelujah. Ah, the word of God says this man, in hell, he opened his eyes and he looked afar off. And who did you think, or who do you think he saw afar off? The beggar who sat at his gate, amen, who the dogs licked his soul. The Bible is saying to me, I think in my mind that this man was so high, so lifted up, so pompous that he didn't care about the beggar at his gate, amen. Because the scripture says he would fain eat, not a meal, of the rich man's table, but the crumbs. The scripture says, his friends, it was the dogs that licked his sores, but he was right outside, Pastor. He was right outside a rich man's gate, amen. This man should have been taken care of, amen. He had the opportunity. The man, uh, the man was not, uh, he was not obligated to take him in and give him a room. Uh, but he, uh, my God, he was in a position uh, to help him. Uh, he was in a position uh, to serve him. He was in a position, amen, to make his life easier. He was in a position, amen, uh, to get those dogs uh, that might have been even diseased uh, to stop uh, licking his wounds. Uh, but it seems uh, from what we see that he did not do that. Uh, and then the time came when the rich man died and the poor man died and we saw because of choice I say to you and I submit to you that poor man in the midst of his need he must have cried out to God or else he would not have made it into heaven Abraham would not have embraced him in his moment I'm saying to you this morning friends friends, and those of you that are within the sound of my voice yes your situation might be tougher yes your, your situation might be hard but let me say to you, there is a God. Hallelujah. And as long as you have life, you have hope. Amen. The Bible says to us, this coffin says to us, it speaks to us about time. Time is the moment and the space that we exist here. But it's a precursor to eternity. Don't be fooled. It's in when you're dead, you're done. Amen. You know start to live. Time would have expired but you have entered into eternity. I submit to you and ask the question to you, where would you spend your eternity? The choices that you make today, the choices that you make even at this moment, as you look at this sweaty preacher preaching to you and encouraging you and telling you, prepare yourself, choose you this day whom you would serve and trust that you would make the right choice. Amen. Let me give you two more quick things, a few quick things. There is a word that we use that's called, as the too late. Too late shall be the cry. As long as you have life, you have hope. I want to debunk any theory, any doctrine that says when you're dead, somebody could pray you out of hell and pray you into heaven. You can't change God's mind. There is one way. To heaven listen to what the scripture says the scripture says and he cried and said that's the rich man father abraham have mercy on me immediately it tells us something the beggar man would have been in trouble while he existed in time he was friends of the dogs amen he might have experienced pain but now he was in the arms of Abraham. Amen. The scripture does not say he was crying. The scripture doesn't say he was mourning. But hear what the scripture says concerning the rich man. The scripture says he cried and he said, Father Abraham, have mercy. He must have never in his life asked God for mercy. 
but there is a reason that he's now asking God for mercy. And I pray today that you will hear and do not make the same mistake. He says, Father Abraham, have mercy and send Lazarus, the beggar. Send the beggar. In his life, he wasn't checking for the beggar. But now he died. He's dead. He's asking for the beggar. And I want you to pick up on this very quickly. He cried, send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Why? For I am tormented in this flame. I submit to you today, brethren, and all that is within the sound of my voice. Uh, even uh, now, think, be wise. We believe in heaven, but we dispel hell. As sure as there is a heaven, there is a hell. As sure as there is life, there is death. But after time has expired and you enter into eternity, there can be no more change, just judgment. And it is tormenting, either heaven or hell. He made a choice to live the life. He lived it up. If he was driving cars, he might have had quite a few under his house. He might have lived in a very big house. The Bible says uh, he, he lived sumptuously. Amen. He lived at large. But then the time came. And the scripture says, come on, I'm almost there. Hallelujah. He says, send Lazarus. But Abraham, God is just, righteous, and fair. As long as you have life, you have the opportunity to make a choice. And I submit today I would have failed as a minister of the gospel to tell you there is salvation in none other but Jesus Christ. Only he died upon the cross of Calvary. And I'm saying that not because I, I, I think it off of my mind. I'm saying that because I believe the B-I-B-L-E, basic instruction to man before leaving it. Hear what the scripture says. Abraham responded. Abraham said, son, even in his moment, even in his torment, Abraham spoke to him with honor and respect. Amen. Abraham said, son, remember, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good thing. In other words, you lived large when you was existing in time. Amen. And Lazarus, amen, on the other hand, was existing, experiencing evil, hard times. But no, but now he is, he is comforted, amen. And thou art tormented. It didn't happen because God decided it. It is happened because of wrong choices. Two men, two different situations. One rich, one poor. The choices that they made determined their eternity. Amen. The scripture says, and besides, Abraham speaks, he says, besides all of this, between us and you, there is a great gulf, so that which could not pass from hence, so we cannot, we cannot, it cannot be done. Amen. Nobody can reach you beyond the grave. When you're dead, you go into your, amen, your eternal reward. Hallelujah. Listen quickly. Hear the rich man now. Then he said, I pray thee, I would like to say beg. I beg thee now, therefore, Father, he must have never said Father in his time. Father, that thou would ascend him, the beggar man, Shafiq, nobody wasn't taken on either man who was dealing with dead people. Like man, man. Amen. But he was a servant, he chose to serve people. He served to be a blessing. Amen. He's begging the Lord. He says, send them. And hear what it is concerned. And I pray, but listen to what the word of God is saying unto us. Send. Amen. Send him, Father. I pray thee that I would have sent him unto my father's house. For I have five brethren that he may testify unto them, lest they also come in this place. Now we recognized. Amen. And I'm sure you must have heard the gospel. I'm sure you must have heard the prophets. Hear what the scripture says. And listen, and I pray you don't make a mistake. The scripture says, Amen. Abraham said unto him, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear him. In other words, you've got to believe this. 
Abraham and the prophet speaks of this, the Bible, the gospel, the good news. Amen. The scripture is saying, Abraham responds to him, you have that, amen. Nobody ain't coming from the grave and talk to you home, amen. If you're seeing them kind of thing, trust me, amen. Amen, let me leave it there. But you ain't want to hear nothing from the grave. You don't want to see anything from the grave. Hear what the scripture says. They have Abraham, amen, and they have the prophets. Abraham said this to him, and he said, no, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they would repent. So this man knew about repentance. But he made a choice not to repent. Repentance is both a condition and an act. It is a condition of being sorry in godly sorrow for sins committed against a righteous and just God. And it is an act, amen, of turning away from. Him. Amen. In other words, you turn away from sin. You turn away from those things that displeases God. But in his life, he had too much. He was too busy to think about that. He must have thought he would have lived forever. He didn't, when he, maybe when he felt a pain, he didn't go to the hospital. He didn't help the San Fernando. Amen. He might have picked up the phone and called the doctor to his home. Amen. He might not have looked like you and I. His beard might not even have gone gray because he would have had enough money to take some things to make him look young and fresh always. But you see, God is God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture closes and says, and he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto him from the dead, they will repent. And Abraham said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, Amen. In other words, speaking about the word of God, Amen. Neither, neither, hear what he's saying? Neither will they hear or be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Amen. In other words, the choice that he made while he had the time, it's too late now that he has entered into eternity. I'm saying to you and I'm submitting to you, dear friend, dear brethren, please, while you have the time, while today is called today, make the right choice. For the choice that you make, has serious consequences. The choice that you make will determine whether you spend your eternity in bliss or in torment. You can receive it, you can believe it, you can reject it. The choice is yours, but you have heard the word that life does not belong to you. Time does not belong to you. Choose you this day whom you will serve, Joshua said. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. Amen. At this time, let us stand. I'm going to just ask you this time. Oh, let us just bow ourselves. Oh. I want to take. I want to take this. I just want to take this opportunity as a minister of the gospel to ask you even now to choose. Joshua looked over Israel, God's chosen people, a people that knew God like no other knew God, a people who God walked with and talked to. Time came when Joshua looked at them because they strayed away from the truth. And he said, choose you this day whom you will serve. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I stand here as a witness today that says that. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Will you choose to accept? Or reject. As all heads are bowed and all eyes closed, I'm asking you today, all heads bowed and all eyes closed, if you would like to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, in other words, make preparation for the time when you will be faced with eternity, 
I'm asking you just to raise your hand. Just raise your hand. I just want to see your hand. Amen. Just raise your hand. If there is one that would say, I want to accept Jesus. I want to be, I want to be ready for, for when my time comes. You know not the time, nor the hour. With all heads bowed and all eyes closed. Amen. I just I'm asking you, just raise your hand. You are not commanded to, you are asked to make a choice. The choice is yours. Amen. But I want to say, Amen. Thank you. Thank you for that hand. I want to say this to you. Amen. That this moment is recorded in heaven. Amen. When you had the opportunity to say yes and you chose otherwise. For the hands that's raised, I want you just to pray with me. Father God, I ask you to come into my heart. I ask you to forgive me of my sins. I ask you to wash me. I ask you to make me move. I repent of my sins and I turn to you even now. And I receive you as my Lord, as my Savior, and soon coming King. And based upon your word, I believe, Lord God, I believe that you've heard my prayer. And Lord God, I promise even now in the presence of witnesses that I will follow you for the rest of my life in Jesus' name. Because the choice is not just to say the prayer, but to walk the talk. The choice is yours. You mean it or you just said it? The choice is yours. At this time, before we, we close off this session, I just want to invite the family. I want to pray with the family for a minute. Could you just come quickly? Amen. I mean, I want to pray with the family. Those of you who are standing, please just stand with us. Amen. As we pray. This is not an easy time. Amen. Yes, I just want to, want, want to pray a prayer of comfort for the family. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Could you come? Could you come? Could you come? Amen. Come. I just want to pray with the family. I'm asking a dear brother just to stand with me at this time. And the reason, the reason that we're doing this, I'm asking those of you, your friends to the family, just join with me, amen. That is never easy. It hurts. The grieving is, it takes time to heal. So I'm asking you just to join with me as we pray, healing for the family. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, today we acknowledge your sovereignty. You are sovereign, God. Lord God, life is in your hand. Our lives, it's in your hand. And even now, Lord God, as we stand together, paying our final tribute to the dearly departed, Father, we lift up, we agree as friends, as family, as neighbors, we agree together today, Lord, on behalf of the bereaved family. Father God, that even the grieving period, that it would be short, oh God. That the healing would be quick, oh God. Father God, we ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, that this moment would draw the family closer together. We come against dissension. We come against confusion. We come against everything, Lord God, that would make the memory of this man a sad one. Oh, Father, we lift them to you today. We lift them to you today, Lord. And we ask in Jesus' name, thy will be done. Comfort them by your spirit. This we ask in Jesus' almighty name with thanksgiving. And may we all say, Amen. Amen. And it means, so shall it be. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. At this time, I'm going to ask the, the, the bearers to just allow, just allow the, the casket to be open just for a few moments, and we do a final viewing, and then we proceed to the shores to do the final briefing.
God bless you. This one. Thank you. Hallelujah. Okay, just the final viewing and then we proceed to the shores of peace.
So when you want to get it back in, you just type it in. And you get back in, in anytime. Nice. So in the morning now, they gotta come what time to take up the little ashes and then. They, they got to tell you. Oh. Well, they're walking with him, I'm walking up, so. Eh? They're walking.
I want to just refer to a passage of scripture. And I pray that it will give you comfort even in this time. I want to say to those who took the time out to be with the family, thank you. Because it is in moments like these that you really need the support of friends, family, neighbor. And I would admonish you, please, those of you who took the time out from your jobs or whatever it is, don't let this be the last. Continue to connect with the family. Continue to help them through this turbulent water. Because grief takes time. Grief is real. And sometimes the person that you see smiling the most or looking like nothing going on, that is the person that is deeply wounded. So I'm urging you, I'm encouraging you, please connect with the family and help them through this period of healing. The scripture tells us in the book of Ecclesiastes, it says, to everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to suffer loss, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear down, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time to war, and a time of peace. And the words may seem very controversial, but what it is saying to us in real essence is that life is uncertain in so many ways. In spite of who you are, you will go through situations. There are times when you will have to fight just to stay sane. There are times when you have to extend you know, the, 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 the hand of peace to somebody. There are times when you have to refrain from people. Yes, there are times when there are some people for your sanity, you need to back off a little bit. There is a season and a time for everything. So now the family and the friends, this is your season of grief. But I want to assure you, one word says to us and puts it this way, and it's something good to hold on to, it's encouraging. It says to us that weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Your time of grieving will be over. I just want to ask, even before we commit the body, the final remains, and I say the body, because Shafiq is not here. This is just the shell, this is just the body. And we are just paying our final respects. But I just want, just briefly, if there is one person that would like to share a little bit on that one person. Because the thing that we want to remain with is the memory of this man, Shafiq. And I am positive that there are many of us that have memories of this man. I urge you, hold on to the good memories. Sometimes it is easy for us to, to, to hang on to the ill things and the bad things. But let me tell you something. If you look carefully, you would recognize that there are so many good things, good qualities. Sometimes there may be just something that we could lay hold on and apply to our own life. I am urging you, I am encouraging you, please remember the beauty that this man would have painted, the things that he would have done that is instrumental in encouraging us. Is there one person that would like to just say something good? I say one, please, good about this man. One memory you want to hold on to. Anybody? One memory, one memory, one memory. Anybody? I'm sure that there has to be memories here today. No memories? I don't believe that. Yeah, one year. Amen. He's stuck up in the garage. Normal. Hello, how are you looking so white? What do you know it is? 
Kami ni gaya juga sedang talk, laugh, gua make my laugh, laugh, laugh. Amen. No we have no such thing. Amen, amen. And that sounds simple. Not everybody has the ability and the quality to make people laugh. That is a great quality. I, 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 hold on to that table. Remember the moments when this man would have encouraged you in laughter and maybe bring a little peace. Sometimes I know the work could be hard and here he comes and he brings what to the garage. Instead of stress, he brings laughter, he brings at ease. And these are the kind of memories you want to hold on to. I'm saying, listen, if you look deep enough, you will find beauty and something that you can hold on to, something that is encouraging. I say to you again, be encouraged. Do not give up. Do not be swallowed up by grief, but be encouraged with the good memory. I leave these words with you. The scripture says in the book of Psalms, verse chapter 27 and verse 1, it says the Lord is, and, and, and I wish that you, you would you put this in your heart, you would lay hold, you believe it, you receive it. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? Of whom shall I be afraid? I say to you, fear not. Fear not. Be of good courage. What is happening to you? You are not the first and you will not be the last. This is your season, but this too shall pass. So I encourage the family, look out for one another, encourage one another, love one another, be there for one another, and that is what this moment should have brought to you. Amen. So at this time, I just want us to just bow our heads in prayer, and this will be our final prayer just before we commit the body. I want us to just bow, and we want to give honor to God because He is sovereign. Amen. And it is an opportunity even to come together and think more so of us preparing ourselves. I reiterate at this time, prepare yourselves. Make use of this moment. And I trust that you will walk away understanding the message of the moment that your turn will come. Prepare. Prepare yourself to meet your maker. And life is not finished when your time expires. Time only pushes you into eternity. Brethren, friends, neighbors, prepare yourself for eternity. Amen? Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift your name at this time. We thank you because you are God all by yourself. There is none like you. There is none to be compared unto you. You are the one that said, let there be and there was. You are the one that called light out of darkness. And you are the one that says, as many as receive him, to them give he power to become the sons of God. I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, sir, that the eyes of the understanding that may be darkened at this time, may be enlightened. And individuals within the sound of my voice will recognize that they need to be ready. They need to surrender to your will and to your way, O oh God. Father, that they need even now to turn away from self and sin and accept you as Lord, as Savior, as God, the one true and living God. This we ask in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Let me hear it. Those who know and understand what I mean when I say amen and amen. Say amen with me, please. Amen, amen. and amen. 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 amen simply means so shall it be and we agree. Amen. We agree, so shall it be. That is what amen means. Amen. Amen. And you would have heard me say over and over today, amen and amen, because I believe every word that I have spoken to you. I believe, amen, that we must prepare ourselves, including me, to meet our maker. Amen. So at this time, we will close 
casket as we make our final move to do the final rites. Amen. I lose these few words and I say we are gathered to commit the rest of the body of the Shafi here in the name of the Lord. I'm encouraging you, even as we do it, to be mindful of the memories some of us would have shared. Let us cherish those memories. At this time, as we commit the body, I would say to you, amen, dust to dust, ashes to ashes. God's will be accomplished in Jesus' almighty name. And I hand over to the
Just before, just before, just before, just before we light the flame, I, 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 I would not feel accomplished if I do not say what I'm going to say here now. I spoke this morning about memories. This what I've seen here today would live in my memory. When you can see a boss in your funeral, serving you in your funeral. That is a testimony in itself. And today I applaud the Guru's family for being humble enough to stand with an employee. Mr. Guru, family and friend, I applaud you and I thank you for the example that you have set today. Well, I wish other bosses would have seen this. Thank you very much. God bless you.